Fam, back with another one, episode number seven, Uncle and Chico Re Live again. Hey, well, actually, this is a recorded show, but get ready for our lives. July 28th, coming to you live and in effect. Hey, Uncle, how's it going? Let them know what we got going on, man, and what it catches at. Hey, you really didn't, you really didn't lie to them. Like, we are live, because <laughs> we're like all the way live. But we will be doing a live show. This, this, this one, like, good times, just recorded live before a studio audience. But there you next, go. Well, we got one more s- Sunday after next, the 28th. That's when they're going to start being live on Sunday night. So, man, we got a lot coming, man. If y'all want to be a part of this on the business tip, you got the email addresses on the screen that hit. We're going to be taking on sponsorships. We're going to be mentioning the views going to be through the roof as the season gets going. So it's just something you want to be a part of, man. Unc and Chico coming at you. We, we know what? Yes, I was about to say weekly, but when you count the recorded content, it's more than weekly. Yeah, yeah. Hey, stay tuned on both channels, uh, the pregame show and Big Dog Chico show. Uh, we have clips on both channels, both social medias. If you want to be a sponsor or advertise, make sure you contact right there on the screen, Big Dog Chico at gmail.com. Or hit up Alexis at the pregame show.com. So stay tuned, man. Hey, if you want to be a part of this, y'all know what to do. We look for all businesses, big, small, uh, and everywhere in between to come and collaborate with us. Shouts out to Goonsville Athletics, Goonsville Clothing. Got your boy looking right. Spiffy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it. I can feel like I'm almost yeah. back in shape now. I know, some, other than I just round. Uh, have some stickers over here, man. They be, you know, you just, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta have your stickers, your hats, all this stuff, man. Got the hat popping off. Get you some, Goonsville, if you haven't gotten them already. Shout out to Goonsville, man. For sure. But, hey, big weekend, guys. Hey, everybody listening in out there, y'all know what it is. It's been the week of college football. EA Sports College Football finally back after about a 10-year hiatus. Uh, Uncle Neil, you've been on the game playing. Everybody's been kind of like, Doing what they got to do, then going back inside to hibernate and getting <laughs> all the playing time they can get in on the game. What has been your experience like on the game? And then we're going to get into the ratings also of the players. What has been your experience? Man, I'm loving it, man. It, it has been, you know, a long time and a long time coming uh, to have a college football game. Used to love it back in the day. And now to have it back and, you know, be working with Coach Prime in Colorado and see guys you know, that you work with on a daily basis, getting their shine with their name on the screens. It's just an exciting time for these student athletes, man, to, you know, see this blossoming of NIL, which really we just starting to scratch the surface on the opportunities that are out there for them. Uh, so love that about the game. Uh, but the gameplay is spectacular, man. It's so much more realistic uh, than the last version and it's more realistic than, than say, the, uh, the Madden or the other football games that are out there, man. From the yeah. stadiums to the mascots to the way the players move, uh, I'm loving every bit of the game. And man, if you out there, if you want to catch an L from your boy Uncle Neely, <laughs> you know, I'm on I'm on PS5 and it's D that's T H E E underscore B S T G K, D underscore B S T G K. Hey, send me send me a friends. Let's hey, let's let's get a game going, man. Uncle Neely said, y'all come over there and catch them L's. You yeah, feel catch me? Them. <laughs> hey, because I tell you what, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If by chance I'm about to catch the L, my internet going to go out. <laughs> oh, you one of them? You one of them? Oh, I'm definitely one of them. I'm definitely one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he said the internet going to go out. I remember oh, back yeah. in the day when, when uh, what was it, the Sega and the, the Nintendo and back then, when they used yeah. to have those shorts up back there and – uh you know, the wire would be always go out somehow. So you yeah. have to position it a certain way. So my uh, thing was, hey, if I'm losing the game, I'll go ahead and just bump that wire and oh, you got, like man, I'm going I to the bathroom. Keep the console console on the floor. And I was yep. just barely tapping with my foot. Like, oh that's man. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's Run it, it back. Man. That's crazy how, how sensitive those things were back in the day. But live not matter of fact, here's a quick question. What was yeah. your what's your favorite game of all time? Because what Mine just came to mind, and it's not even a football game. It's a it was the basketball game, NBA Live '95. That show you my age a little bit right there. Live '95 was my favorite game. What was your favorite one? Yeah, hey man. You know, in this in because uh, I'm a little older than you, Chico. You see all this gray. If I'm oh, gonna man. go, just I already all, know where you going all the time. I'm going Grand Theft Auto, man. I'm going that. Oh, whole Grand city. Theft. Yeah, man. Matter okay. of fact, the only thing that's gonna make me put this college football down. Is they say Grand Theft coming back this year? So if, if that drop 
anytime this fall or winter, I'm going to put this college football up for a minute. Okay. Grand Theft, Shout out to Grand Theft, Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Like, that's, that's my favorite franchise all as far as games. Well, y'all let us know in the chat what's your favorite games. Uh, I will give a quick rundown and say Mike Tyson punch out. Take oh, a bowl. Yep. Uh, remember Last a game year. called Arch Rivals. Uh, USA Basketball had a game. As we're getting into USA basketball, and my favorite that thing was on Sega. Tecmo, my favorite thing about Tecmo Bowl, you could drop back fifty yards and still throw it. You could just run straight backwards. My and favorite Bo, thing was, Bo, was, was Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson, Jackson. Yep. unstoppable, unstoppable. Man. <laughs> Bo Jackson, Barry Sanders was pretty good back then too. Walter Payton, oh yeah, even I think they had him on the game. Damn. Yeah, he was, but man, but but they could be stopped a little bit. Bo. Bo would run around you over like, man, Bo was unstoppable. And I was like, man, yeah. Bo must have put some money in the game. Like, they got him just Superman on him. They used to be bouncing off Bo Jackson. Uh, double dribble, shot the double dribble. Shout out uh, double dribble. Super Contra. Yeah. Uh, then we'll we, we move on up to the mid-90s and go Mortal Kombat and uh, a few others. Uh, now, when Mortal, when Mortal Kombat dropped, that changed the game because that was like the first first games that had like real violence in it and that opened the door yeah like grand theft auto and call of duty and all that uh mortal kombat was their first that, that had them ratings for you know the goriness and the blood uh but it was, it was get was, over was, here yeah yeah <laughs> test your might oh, damn you you might need to start doing voiceovers <laughs> <laughs> raiding all of them man um so speaking of college, the, the the games, we get back into the college football game, and I was looking at some of the ratings. Um, I won't put them up right here, but some of the ratings that, that stood out to me was things like Shador Sanders' strength was higher than Shiloh Sanders' strength. Um, Justin Mayer's strength was about the same as a guy like a defensive end like uh, uh, Dayon Hayden. Actually, I think Hayden was – was uh or Hayes was higher than Justin Mayers. I don't think that's in real life. Um, you had Jimmy Horn Jr., who is not as fast as Travis Hunter. I think he is faster or as fast as Travis Hunter. Uh, I talked to Cass Cleveland yesterday. He said Charlie Offerdahl's ratings were way low. They said they had him as the fourth string, and Cass said he's not the fourth string. So what are some things that stood out to you? About the also a Marion Miller rating and Cameron Simmons Craig ratings too. Oh my God, unbelievable! So, what are some things that stood out to you? All of that and then some. I tell you what, though, what what I have been getting into more than the the ratings and their numbers is how they play when you make a play with that particular athlete. And mm. no matter what number they got for Jimmy Horn Jr., when you throw the ball to him and he catch it, they, he don't get caught. Uh, same, same thing like with Will Shepard. Like all the attention on the offense from a defense perspective is on Travis. But, man, mm -hmm. Will Shepard and, and Jimmy Horn Jr., I've been doing big plays with them. And uh, and I, I'm loving what Shiloh is doing on defense on the game. So regardless of what they got his numbers, uh, you know, he's getting interceptions, making big hits, causing uh, causing fumbles. I, here's what, I, here's what I, I'm hoping for and really believe is going to happen. As the season goes on in 2024 and we start playing real football, that the game is going to have yep. updates, you know, based on that. Even the way the players look is going to, you know, some of the more – because when you get deep into the game, uh, some of the brothers on there, it's just generic black guy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, they literally <laughs> all look alike. But I think yeah. as guys start making names for themselves and their numbers go up in real life, you're going to see the game adjust to that. Uh, but I love Colorado's running game on the game. Uh, I love the passing game on the game. And same thing with Travis, man. When he catches one, you don't catch him. He gone. It's bye bye. He riding out. So, like you said, I think as the as the season goes on, the game will be updated. The rosters will get updated, and they'll know, you know, that oh, this guy actually can play, and it's not just. The, but I think Colorado has some of the most footage of their players out there. To where they should know pretty much every player's ratings. Here's one thing I was surprised about also, and I posted about this. Looking at the ratings once again, I'm surprised about the lowest rated guy on the team was Caleb Mathis. And I would think that EA Sports had the most access to Colorado football players to see how they move, how they 
you know, reacting game situations, what they've done in the spring, to know that a guy like Caleb, who's been there, shouldn't be the lowest rated guy on the team, even lower than the freshman coming in. How was that? Did you even notice that right there? I, I didn't because I hadn't uh, I haven't played with him yet. I haven't adju- I didn't I haven't adjusted the starting lineups. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there's sometimes schematically where when you got it in coach mode and somebody goes in or out, but if they don't necessarily make a play, you don't get a feel for them. You know, with your controller. I'll say this, and this is not to uh, justify it. This is to kind of understand it, man. With so many teams on there and so many players on there, that I bet you a lot of times what they're doing. They're just looking at the metrics of a guy as far as his height, you know, his weight, uh, his playing experience, uh, and just kind of giving him something generic based on that. Because a perfect example yeah. of what you just said is Charlie Offerdahl. Here's a guy who went yeah. from walk on the scholarship, you know, so the whole world knows him. Uh, and if anybody else was going to give him those scholarships, it would, it would be Caleb uh, with the work he's doing. I mean, he, he is Mr. Reliable out there, always open and always making every catch and running his routes right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But again, Chico, I really do believe that as we get to about week three of the season and then again, week six, you're going to see these games adjust for what's really happening in the real world. All right. Well, right now, uh, can you let everybody know what space the team is in right now? Because you see a lot of guys doing some gaming as they should be. Uh, Is it kind of like a in-between period? Are they just working out? Let everybody know what's going on right now. Uh, yeah, just, just uh, still, you know, wrapping up uh, summer two, as it's called, strength and conditioning. Uh, coach Prime has, uh, uh, you know, made a head coach call and put in another little break for him. Uh, so you'll see guys on their social media posts kind of hitting the road and doing their own thing the next couple of days and, and throughout next week. Uh, but also still, you know, some strength and conditioning taking place, you know, on their own as well or if they want to work out in groups. Uh, but from a functional football standpoint, you're not going to see uh, any more of that until Monday the 29th of July, which is that first practice. So you're going to see a lot of guys out there gaming, a lot of guys, you know, uh, maybe you see footage of them boarding a plane on their Instagram because they're running home real quick uh, for a short little break. But I, I don't think, man, summer one and summer two could have gone any better. When you look at, you know, say a Travis Hunter, uh, who from the spring to now put on 17 pounds of muscle, you look what your do is able to do to change his body. Uh, you look where Rock, uh, Tyler Brown has done in that weight room uh, to the point where an NFL guy like Coach Phil Lodehold, his offensive line coach, saying this is the strongest player I've ever been around at any level. Uh, so I think the arrow is completely pointed up from a strength and conditioning standpoint, which only means when you get to uh, Monday, the 29th of July, going into fall camp and you start doing those installs and real practice and then a week later got pads on, all of that should go smoother than last year because the team is in better shape than they were last year. All right, let's talk about this then, some media and how things are run behind the scenes, so to speak. Uh, we had a question last week. said, ask Uncle Neely, uh, what's the dynamic between himself, Reach to People Media, and uh, Well Off Media? How do they decide what's going to be shot, uh, what's going to be filmed, and what's going to be put out and um, if they're filming the same thing, basically, how do they get different perspectives, so to speak? Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, man, I'm glad to. I think that's a, a, a great question. Uh, one, I think people have to appreciate and understand this ain't our first rodeo. We were together at Jackson State doing this. And so we have a good sense of what fits somebody else's style of coverage, you know, versus the other outlets. So, you know, we're not, quote, unquote, in each other's way. Uh, and not really covering the same thing in the same kind of dynamic. Uh, because like you said, there's a lot of times we are in the same room. We are covering the same thing, but it, it looks different on all three three different channels because we have our, our own personalities and what we see and what we like and what we look for. Uh, outside of that, we totally do uh, different things throughout the day. You know, I do more of the sit down interviews with the players and in depth with Coach Prime's guests. Uh, uh, Bucky with reach to, uh, with uh, excuse me, well off media is that day into life uh, vlogging going on. What's really happening with each player in the building all day? And then you got reach to people with Darius, which is kind of a mix of both. So we're not in each other's way. We don't, we never even sit around and discuss like, hey, you got this, I got that. It really just has happened or- organically, you know, since the Jackson State days, and we kind of know 
oh, that's his thing. He got that. Or no, that's that's what he likes to focus on. So he has that. And and there's no doubt about it, man, with the three channels embedded in the building and that building being five floors and it being 100 people on the team and 30 on the staff, you're not going to see the same thing every day on each channel. You know, it's right. just like when you and I do a show together and we could talk about gaming and WNBA and anything else and I can go do a show with somebody else or you could do a show with, say, Adam, and it's still a totally different show because you're talking to a totally different person. And so the exactly. different personalities come out of each other chemistry wise. Uh, but it's really a good fit, the three of us there, because we never crowd each other's content or, you know, man, we can be in the huddle filming Coach Prime's speech before practice. And by the time we all three put it out, if we all three put it out, looks totally different because one of us may be focused on a, a player as he's listening and somebody else is fo focused on Coach Prime. So it, it, it really just works well, man. You would think that it'd be somewhere like we're in each other's way, but it has, it is yet to happen. And that's now, yeah. you know, four years. Big time right there. You guys are definitely doing some trend setting type things. Um, have there been other media outlets kind of reached out to you guys that either for consulting or just to have you guys on to kind of pick your brain and things of that nature? Oh yeah. All the time, all the time. We hear from uh, people who want to duplicate this at different schools. Uh, and not even just football. Like one of the one of my passions uh, is basketball. I used to play it and coach it. And so I've had mid majors, Power Five, HBCUs. Hey, we want to create a platform like you have for football for our basketball program. And we've been, you know, consulting on stuff like that in the past and uh, and even presently. So a lot of folks see what's happening and they understand how having an internal but yet external media outlet. And here's what I mean by that: you're embedded with the head coach at his or her discretion but you don't actually work for the school. Uh, and so you get to do things differently from the institution can do. And it just helps recruiting. It helps exposure uh, because it's expensive to fly around the nation and try to show people what's going on when you could just have somebody there doing their thing content wise and show the world every day. Exactly. And with that, you know, um, you're going to have people seeing you uh, way more than before. And that's going to come with some praises and it's going to come with some, uh, some uh, criticism and scrutiny and everything else mm -hmm. behind it. And some came this week, as usual. <laughs> it seemed like it's coming every week like the mailman. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> drop off. Here's your hate for Coach Prime this week. And it came uh, by way of Paul Feinbaum, well-respected, well-known journalist for many years. As a matter of fact, when I first interned, uh, for talk radio back in Birmingham, Alabama, when I was uh, doing my UAB days, uh, the building that we worked in and we did our little show out of, Paul Feinbaum was right across the hall. And I, and this is before I even knew who he was, honestly, because he did a lot of Alabama football at the time. And when I went to UAB, I was like, ah, forget Alabama. So I get there, and the guy I'm working with, he was so starstruck. He said, man, that's Paul Feinbaum over there. I'm like, who the hell is Paul Feinbaum? And, you know, I went over there, sat in his seat and everything. Come to find out who he was later on, big deal, ESPN and everything else. Well, he said Coach Prime um, might not show the patience or have the patience to stay in Colorado long enough for them to be winners, for them to be champions or threats in the playoffs. And this year, they are a non-factor so to speak. How do you feel about those comments from Paul Feinbaum? First, I say this, everybody is entitled, you know, to their opinion and you have the right to express your opinion. Uh, but what you're not entitled to is your own facts. You can't make up, mm. uh, you know, a set of, uh, of your own facts, facts are facts, opinions or opinion. You can have your opinion, but you can't have your own facts. And so wow. when I heard what he was saying, I respect the opinion part of it. But I think he's way off base on the factual part of it because he said Colorado football, you know, uh, is irrelevant in the national landscape, particularly as it relates to the playoffs. Uh, he talked about Coach Prime, uh, you know, being a great salesman and business person, but not a great coach and would not have the patience to do what it takes to do there as if it's going to take a long time to do it. Uh, so here's my response, you know, to those couple of points there, Chico. One, you know, college football, just like the NFL, is a quarterback driven league. I don't understand how you could have one of, if not the best quarterback in college football, you know, going into his senior season uh, with the revamped offensive line, 
with the weapons that he has at wide receiver, those that transferred in and have grown with him, such as Travis Hunter, how that equals irrelevant in the big scheme of things, I don't know how you reach that conclusion. I think Colorado has a far greater chance than most college teams, you know, to make noise in the playoffs. Because with this expanded role, all you have to do is a couple of paths, win your conference championship, and it is very possible for Colorado to play in that Big 12 championship and win it or be ranked in the remaining eight. Once upon a time, right out the gate last year, Colorado got as high as I think 15 or 16 in the nation. I don't understand where he's coming from with that. Then when he says that Coach Prime doesn't have the patience to see this thing through, you're acting like it's going to take him 20 years to rebuild something. You know, he right. went from 1-11 uh, to 4-8. and eight. If, he, if he does that again, you know, that would be eight wins, and then after that it would be 16 wins. Uh, so right. that's just that's just a three-year a window. Uh, right. I, I don't see what, you know where you can uh, just say it's going to take them so long to be there that Colorado – uh, so far behind that Coach Prime wouldn't have that kind of patience. And I don't see how you could say a team with the quarterback that they have in Shadur Sanders, the weapons that they have in Travis Hunter, Will Shepard, Jimmy Horn Jr., uh, Jonte Wester, you name it, across the board, revamped offensive. I don't understand how you could say in August, July, that that's irrelevant to the landscape of the playoffs. I think it's very relevant. That's what happened when you come from Haterville. You need to be coming from Goonsville. You feel me? Instead of hate. <laughs> I like I like what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> Get up out of there, man. So that's Paul Feinbaum's take. I can under I'll say this. I'll play the other side a little. I can understand him saying this because let me tell you why. Because he feels like this. They're not gonna they're, they're gonna be the same team as last year. He doesn't he's not looking at the transfers that's coming in, the improvements that's been done around the whole program, he's looking at the team from last year. And he's saying in the grand scheme of the playoffs, the eight teams that should be there or however many it ended up being, that that team that he looked at last year is not going to be here. Well, and, and that's why RG3 said that is one of the dumbest takes or worst takes that I've heard all day because he's basing it off of last year. He's not even looking at or paying attention to the 40-plus guys that Coach Prime brought in and the reason why they came in and the, the the things that held Colorado back last year and the improvements being made. So let him be one of those guys. It's like one of those guys that just get hit and they don't even know they're getting hit because he don't see it coming, you know? And those are going to be the worst ones. Those those hurt the worst sometimes because you don't even see it. Knocked you, slap out, blindsided. Yeah. So he's going to be one of those guys laying on the field. He's going to get the stretcher to come out and get him because he's going to be blindsided by the success of Colorado is what I feel. So just stay tuned, Paul Feinbaum. Let me say this to you, Chico. With what Coach Prime has done from the end of last season to the beginning of this one that we've yet to begin, if you don't see it, it's because you don't want to see it. Like you, you, you are willfully looking the other way. If you think that this roster, this coaching staff, because, you know, you didn't just make – changes on the, in the players you made significant right. changes uh, on the coaching staff uh, if you can see that the arrow is pointing more up than it was a year ago you just don't want to see it the media will run out and find people who've left here and try to grab those stories but they don't call up those guys that stayed and been here and fought through it and have made this team under a coach prime standard like that's where the, that's where the story is. First half was a little sloppy. That first quarter had some uncharacteristic penalties both sides of the ball. The defense really stepped up in that second quarter, and got us back in the game. We got the ball first because we deferred. If we score on this drive, when we score on this drive, ball game over. They're gonna fold.